Now I can give him a treat. Yeah. I had to hold on. Poor Archie has been sitting all with bated breath. Just look at his focus. I, he is so focused. He. <laughs> no. <laughs> wow. Oh, look at the tail. That is the best trick. Patience. This like, is... it's way better than a shake or a rollover. Good patience by a good guy is my favorite trick of all. He's the most patient of dogs. Yeah? Yeah. I don't know how much longer I can talk to you with that thing on your face. <laughs> <laughs> Check out our YouTube. These were part of the uh, uh, Alaska show. Happy 710 day from the show. It's well past 710 now, but uh, yeah, these were a part of it. I'm eating the mustache. Can you see that? It's... <laughs> Ew. Uh, yeah. That... This is Terp Productions right here. Terps. Okay. productions with a z say this more about their, all um, of it we, we no, but anyone who is not watching and just listening doesn't know what you have on your face i think everyone is on youtube and everyone was in alaska i okay. don't need to explain much <laughs> can i see those yeah they're those crazy glasses with a nose and a mustache attached friends let's see how you look that's is it cute do i look good you look amazing yeah does it suit me it does waka 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 <laughs> <laughs> should i you, wear these when i um do time on any of your shows oh come out wear those and then put a uh, arrow through your head yeah maybe a bow tie that rolls up and um a seltzer bottle to close perfect yeah yep boy you could get away with murder with those i'd be like i don't know i think it was eugene levy (laughs) 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 it was it was eugene levy came out and killed that man (laughs) so you got these as part of your delivery from alaska after you went up to do a comedy show and that's why we're moosing it yeah i wanted to moose it with you to can i give him one more treat oh no i broke them yes you can give him one more treat okay. the glasses are broken tossing them aside why do i think you did that intentionally maybe <laughs> you don't know anyone who tunes in on youtube can see me quietly breaking them while you're giving your treat. yeah because you knew i was going to put them back on my face I can't and now handle it i'm gonna have an anxiety attack if you're wearing those for our entire podcast which i know you would because that's how you do i would you see a button you push it i do push it and then i push it until the other person cracks <laughs> Cool. That's the most fun thing I can think of is like, <laughs> but it's not evil pushing. It's just pushing until someone freaks out because they didn't use their words to begin with. The thing that we've learned by doing this podcast for so long together is we have to cut to the chase right away and mm-hmm. use our words to let each other know how we're going to feel so that we don't explode. Yeah, for sure. That's a, such a big part of our dynamic is that I had to learn really early on to actually just say to you like, hi, Mike, please stop doing that and not like, yeah, do some subtle cues or anything because like- Not going to read them. We're going to- but yeah, well, you choose not to, I think, because you're like, how far can I go with this? Oh, yeah. It's not like I don't see them. Mm-hmm. It's more that, no, no. <laughs> oh, that means it's working. It's so diabolical. You're <laughs> no, diabolical. Well, I like to know how what it takes. Yeah. I And I appreciate that about you. Like, you have um, kind of, th- this is going to sound like an insult, and I don't mean it as an insult, but like we'll rubbing up against your, that aspect of your personality has like revealed parts of my personality that I didn't really know existed. Ooh, are they mischievous? They're mischievous and they're much more forthright and they care much less about what someone thinks about me. Like I've learned to say things in a different way because of our friendship and our relationship like on this pod. Yeah. Yeah. You taught me how to use my words, Mike. I, it's so important to me. I just won't. I don't have time for no one who knows how to talk. Right. You know what I mean? Well, then, yeah. And then you just realize when you really start looking at it, how passive aggressive the world is. Yes. It's like a passive aggressive society that we live in. Well, I think growing up in Missouri, and this will tie into Alaska, the growing up in Missouri, it is that buttoned up. Right. I'd rather sit in silence. I'd rather say nothing. I'd rather say stew. nothing in stew. Mm-hmm. I'm a crock pot society. Mm-hmm. I will stew for six hours in the Midwest to create that chili cheese nacho, <laughs> bubbling dread and anger, and then it's bubble over. Qu- I mean, I come from that background as well. That was definitely um, how my parents' generation operated. Was like, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Definitely don't know. Don't let anyone anyone know that you're ever upset with them for any reason. Mm-hmm. And then it just like festers and it gets so crazy like there are people who don't speak to each other for decades because of something that they could have you know just dealt with a conversation and some of them's last name might be glazer or marks or gibson (laughs) how about that how about that here we are healing intergenerational trauma on our podcast on our podcast because i remember the first time i heard don't say anything nice don't say anything at all or whatever the saying if you can't say anything nice don't say anything at all um just don't say anything it was a fucking yeah shut the fuck up unless you're nice (laughs) never speak (laughs) Don't speak. Ever. Ever. Just be quiet and eat this Frito pie. (laughs) That's so Midwestern. Have you tried the ambrosia salad? Shut up. (laughs) Did you ever see Bambi? Yeah, the movie? Yeah, I think it was Thumper who like preached that. The little 
the little rabbit whose name is Thumper, but kept it nice, which is a weird name for an animal it who should be thumping. It was because he thumps thumping. with his foot. Right, but he's not saying anything. He's tapping his goddamn foot. Say what you need, Thumper. Say oh, what you need. Oh, okay. And so that was the first time I really remember because Disney is like the moral teacher of America, um, how to <laughs> how to like live as a Christian, I would say. Don't say it like- it's If you a, can't say anything nice, don't, don't say, say anything. anything at all. Right. Yeah, I feel like there's a lot of Christian values going through Disney movies. And uh, thinking about Alaska, that is like one of the places, another place where I feel like freedom of expression is a part of the deal when you live there. Freedom to express yourself or also just be very far away from people all the time. Both work. Right. Both, Both work. work. <laughs> Both work. Because yeah. like that's that's what the parallel was between growing up in the Midwest. Thank you, Mary Jane. The parallel is in Alaska. No, you look each other in the eye. You shake each other's hand. You respect the idea of someone saying their thing as much as you respect the idea of saying your own. And it doesn't mean you have to agree, but it does mean that you have to give everyone the same respect that you also want to be free. And that was your experience when you were there? Since Jump. That's why it's my favorite place. That's why when I like texted you and I was like, I want to be able to afford a place here. Mm -hmm. I think it's because Vegas is my nobody knows me, let me lose my mind and let Hedonism. my fucking hedonistic, you know, Tie yeah. me up in stirrups and ride me around. What is it? Spit in your mouth and ignore you? Spit in my mouth and ignore me. <laughs> Mike's love language it's for anyone who's language. listening who knows. I didn't know what a love language was when I heard that joke. Mine is if you go, oh. I'm rock hard. Wow. Just, okay. And so, <laughs> and and in Alaska, it, it, it truly is that to me. It is the idea of, I might not believe the same as you, but I am proud of the freedom I have to believe what I believe and you believe what you believe, which also... It's not an excuse for a place that loves Trump, but in going to that Trump rally while I was on in Alaska, because it was the same day as my show, I sold more tickets, you know, just saying. <laughs> um, I sold out Trump a little less, a little light, a <laughs> little light. Uh -huh. um, and, and I'm not, a, I don't fuck with Trump at all. But what I do fuck with is the people who are at that rally, having the ability to be at that rally, wave their American flags, be happy, be civil, hang out and all chat. I just wish it wasn't for Trump. Right. You know what I mean? But that's, you know, the freedom to assemble, the freedom of speech, all that kind of stuff. It's fucking. Yeah. And yeah. I feel it there more than anywhere. Just, yes. That's, uh, I, uh, my experience in Alaska has been so different because you've spent time in like Anchorage and the city. Like I spent that one week in Anchorage way back when we brought Weed and Grub up there in 2019, but you've spent so much more time there than I have. The whole time I was there, I was just out on the water. So I, I've had a very different experience and I just love that you've like, you know, basically adopted Alaska as like your new home state. I mean, what's like, the sticker? Yeah. Shout out oh, Kellen wait. Pierce. Birthplace of ranch dressing. Nice. I mean, come on. Now, this is from a joke you told? Well, this is from research that led to a joke. Okay. Um, I did tell this joke and whatever. But the idea, the fact of the matter is the man who created ranch dressing was in Alaska when he created it, moved to California, sold that um, uh, recipe to Hidden Valley, and that is the ranch we know today. And the idea that Alaskan ranch invention has been buried in this country is so <laughs> Fucked up and egregious. inappropriate. It's egregious. How dare they? Name one thing worse. Everyone knows the Doritos or origin story. Why doesn't everyone know the Hidden Valley Ranch? Yeah, exactly. Over origin story. So, um, you know, maybe it's a tattoo. Maybe we keep it as stickers. Either way, ranch was invented in Alaska, and that's the number one dressing slash dip. Definitely a tattoo. Definitely a tattoo, right? Yeah. yeah. And this is a good place to say, how's it going, Mike? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> really good. What up, Mary Jane? How's it going, Mike? Great. Welcome to Weed and Grow, everyone. This is a podcast. I'm high. Uh, about comedy. <laughs> Cannabis. Cooking. Culture. Calling shit out. And Alaska. And Alaska. This is a loose moose of all mooses. It's a moose because of our shared love for Alaska, and then you have stuff to show off from Alaska, Yeah. Too. Is that cool to do some show and tell? Because I'm just we like- We got to. I, I just have like close friends there now who I really love dearly. What are their names? I'll kill them all. <laughs> <laughs> I am now doing six different podcasts. Interlopers. <laughs> <laughs> we can find time for ours for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and also, like, the weed is fucking bomb. Yeah. Bomb, bomb, bomb weed. And you visited a grow too, right? I visited. So the cool thing is I've been, we went to a grow together. We went to uh, Great Land Ganja out on the Kenai Peninsula, and they gave us a tour of their grow. And they were growing all, I believe, um, light depth at that time. Yes. Um, but you were at an indoor facility, I saw. I was, called Guest Services. So good. So deep in the game, but also a very high, 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 high level, high standard. Mm -hmm. Shout out Guest Services. 
Um, I pulled up. I have some notes about them. If we're gonna like get into just like the you plant have notes side of things, for yeah. Our podcast today. I, I really care about this. Mary wow, Jane. this is exciting. I care I'm about our to... podcast. I know you care about our podcast. I also care about this podcast. So but I don't the... have notes. <laughs> um, the thing I as I pull them up and find them. Oh, I'll do it through the keyword guest. Um, the thing that I learned that was really interesting when we were there. Guest In... services. There it is. When we were there. Um. In January? No. We were there in April of 2019. So what, the was, the, you what was the dark lightness? That was spring. So it was getting lighter. The it, days were getting longer. And okay. they were very long. Like I remember it was light until about 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. yeah. And so then when I went there in January and performed at Kootz's, um, dark, 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 dark mm -hmm. all the time. Now performing at 710 with all my friends, light the entire time. So uh -huh. I've kind of seen the full circle of... Um, Alaska and going to those groves, I learned two things. One is outdoor is fucking impossible. It's dark all the time or it's light all the time. Like, but that's the, why Great Lankanja was doing the light deprivation exactly. in greenhouse groves. Yeah. But the really cool thing that a lot of people are doing in Alaska is they're doing small batch craft cannabis mm -hmm. in greenhouses and they're harnessing that perfect, you know, Chicago springtime of mm -hmm. Alaska to grow outdoor. And it's so special because it's that short, tiny, tiny time little window. window. And the you know the more rounds of that you can get with a seed and popping and growing and creating the best possible small craft tiny window cannabis. Mm -hmm. And that's coming out of fucking Alaska. Small craft tiny window cannabis is a great name. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, I learned a lot actually at guest services. Um, I learned like how to make diamonds. Have you ever seen how diamonds are made? Tell me. Uh, well, I'm I'm gonna be. Guest services is now going to turn it off and yell at me because I'm going to be wrong about a couple of things. But the idea of like having a mason jar and having it separate into diamonds, oil, and distillate, probably, distillate. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And using gases for that process and how those machines create those gases and how one person there, I think his name is Cody, shout out Cody, he can use different filters for all of that. And so every single um, plant matter that they're using, maybe a little bit different. Maybe there's a little bit of variety. It's older, it's newer, it's fresher, it's more crystally, less crystally. Mm -hmm. um, maybe there's mold on something that they're cleaning for somebody else, but they can clean it for someone else. So he, he has, uh, Cody is this chemist when it comes to making diamonds and dabs and distillate because he can put different filters on to mm -hmm. get the most out of all the plant matter of that specific plant matter. Yeah. And it was a very cool process to watch. Did you see the extractor? Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. Maybe I can share a picture i'll ask yeah them. share some pics it's always so cool to see extraction setups i'm uh i visited a couple we visited peak extracts when we were in portland i think that was the first uh, like really big operation i had seen or commercial extraction operation and it's just like so cool how dialed in they can get it and like cleaning cannabis like you say it's just it's really pretty incredible it is i wish more people would be able to see it because it gets me excited about the products that i'm putting in my body when i see somebody who is like a wizard with mm -hmm. the canister mm -hmm. doing it it's very fucking cool nice um oh, which also brings me to can i just shout out a bunch of alaska products i think that's what we have to do and okay. i also want to crack into some of this like snacks game here that oh, you brought yeah. because this is salmon from alaska too Wait, let's weed and grub this baby let's do it um sorry i got geeked out and i forgot to be funny because i was just like passionate about <laughs> weed i forgot that i should be entertaining got to be funny that's not possible you're always entertaining mike it doesn't matter what you do <laughs> is that another bristle no you said it in a bristle i said it in a bristle or maybe i'm having trouble accepting a compliment you, now i'm attacking you yeah for it. you're attacking me for giving you a compliment There's i think zero I am. bristle in there i think i am i was just being nice sorry you want to sit in it for a sec i should yeah just to learn from you're it. always entertaining i always have a good time hanging out with you thanks <laughs> <laughs> So Perfect. can we shout out Joe because he's a friend of both of ours? Yes. Uh, Ice Beard Comedy, Comedy on Instagram, right? Yes. Sorry, I said it over you. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to push this microphone out of the way and uh, get myself a cracker situation while you talk about what you have in that box there. Perfect. And then we can loop back to what's on that crack. Um, so I just want to shout out a couple places. Catalyst. Mary Jane, will you duck? Oh, shit. Thanks. <laughs> look, at, Sorry, look at this cheese hunch. <laughs> a cheese hunch. That's so great. Oh, thank you. Um, Catalyst Cannabis. Bomb, bomb pre-rolls. Shout out Catalyst Cannabis. Oh, also, ooh, is this Wilson One? Yeah, this is Wilson One. Polychrome Press. Thank you, Polychrome Press, for hooking it up. We also hung out afterwards at the after party. Shout out Ben, throwing a great after party. Fried chicken wings. Wings, big 
fried. Delicious. Okay. Can't get enough of them. And then also I want to shout out, um, I called them big hat cannabis because I'm dumb. <laughs> it's top hat cannabis because THC. <laughs> Sorry. That is a good <laughs> big hat cannabis. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Great. <laughs> Just a real misstep by Mike right there. Oh, my God. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then also uh, choice extracts, which um, when Zach picked me up from the airport and um, we drove to my Airbnb, we landed at the Airbnb at 419 and he packed up some choice extracts, which is a part of guest services. And that was my first Puffco hit of Alaska was at 420 right here, choice extracts. Nice. Really cool. So ideal. I yeah. remember when we were in Alaska and on that road trip where we went from Anchorage to LA and did the whole West Coast that we kept leaving places and pulling into places at 420. It seemed like no matter what we were doing, we were always departing or arriving. Yeah. Every time. Even when we pulled back into LA after the whole like thousands of miles of road trip, it was 420. It was, was like, 420. That's fucking nuts. That was crazy. Mm-hmm. Remember? It was like every day. Yeah. We like, pulled whoa. into your apartment. You're driving, you're parking Like space. I parked and we looked at the clock and we were like, whoa. <laughs> and that was the end of the tour. And that was the end. Whoa. Um, what's in that little um, turquoise canister over there? Is that some more bud? Yeah. Oh, this is also from Prolly Chrome Grass. Oh, you haven't smelled this no, yet. I want to give it a whiff. And then uh, what are these gummies here? Oh, thank you, Mary Jane. So not only, first, Ooh. what do you think of the polychrome grass? It smells so nice and, yeah, super lemony, a little skunky. Delicious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're indoors sick. Nice. They're indoors sick. I'm covered in cheese. <laughs> I'm going to eat this bite too. <laughs> Great. And also lemon drop stony mousse edibles. Um, Again, when I got to that Airbnb, there was a buffet of Alaskan treats to oh, try. God. And so I immediately popped a stony mousse. And I immediately started watching YouTube videos for the rest of the afternoon. And it was great. So thank you, Stony Moose. I've never seen more Maddie Matheson in my life. Fuck yes. Yeah. Perfect. And now I'm going to bite into this um, beautiful smoked salmon. Uh, we've got a, on a little cracker with a bite of bourgeon cheese to be fancy. Archie is looking like he would like some as well. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. There's nothing like it. What the fuck, man? Alaskan smoked salmon. I'm tasting a little bit of heat in there even. He's got mm-hmm. like some chilies, maybe. Joe. Yeah, Joe puts chilies in there. Mm-hmm. Wow. Some sweetness. Smoke and spice. Yes. All in one bite. With the freshest salmon you can get. Did he catch that himself? They do. He might be fishing as we record this right now. He's fishing today. Yeah, truly. (laughs) That's awesome. Wow, that's so good. It's so fucking good. Um, I'll make you one more in one second. We have to talk about salmon fishing. Yes. Okay. Yeah, did you go fishing? Um. No, I did not. But we. it was very cool to be around a lot of people who were getting ready for the season. Mm -hmm. I think I might have missed... Um, the season is open when you were there. It was. Mm-hmm. Well, nobody likes me enough to invite me. <laughs> That's what it was. Is that what you want me to say, Mary Jane? No, no. I'm just saying like they, I'm, I'm not questioning you um, not being invited because nobody liked you. I'm just saying you were very busy and they didn't want to show you their secret fishing spots. <laughs> 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 anyway, no, I just know the season was open because I have friends in the commercial fishery up there. Oh, really? Who are working. Yeah, Greg and Amy. Oh, yeah. Shout out FVR Minta. Yeah. Um, I didn't get invited with Joe because... I think I'd be a liability. If I don't I'm think he likes you. Up. No, he loves me. <laughs> no. You think you'd be a liability um, going fishing? Yeah, because what I learned, especially in Alaska, um, the beautiful thing about it is that th- this type of salmon fishing will provide for people and their homes for a very long time. Like, it is an important thing. So I would probably go up there and do some funny bits, mm-hmm. you know, get a lot of laughs with the fishing pole. and other They're stocking their larder for the they're winter. They're fucking serious. This mm-hmm. is important. Yeah. And, you know, I would want to be there as someone who knows what to do to have the most success possible. Because um, Joe can catch up to 55 fish because of whatever the laws are. It's like you as the homeowner can catch one amount and then every member of that family under that roof can catch a certain amount and 55 fish i mean you've gone salmon boating before how many pounds of fish could that be for these people it depends if this is coho which i think it probably is like a fat coho is around eight pounds um eight to ten pounds so you know hundreds of pounds of fish right yeah and that'll last forever which is why you need delicious recipes like that yeah and you smoke it and then canning it is just like awesome because it doesn't need to be refrigerated and then you crack open a can of that and it's like so, I mean, it's it's such a delicacy. It's so crazy. And you just think like when you go to Alaska, 
and you look around and you're like, oh, this is just what you have in your house. Yeah. Because you caught this and then made this and now you can have that anytime. Oh. What? It was my one of my favorite things about working on the boat was um I was uh, a deckhand and, and the cook. And um oftentimes dinner would just be just fish on the like salmon out of the water onto the grill with a salad and some of the best days of my life. Like, yeah. The best the best fish and the best food. And the cool thing that some people might not know about the salmon coming out of Alaska is that it's actually a different species from the Atlantic salmon. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. If you want to nerd, can I nerd out about it for a second? Please. My dad was a salmon biologist. So the fish that you're normally buying when you buy salmon in any grocery store is Atlantic salmon. And it's um, almost always going to be farmed unless it says wild caught on it. It's always going to be farmed. And that is just a genetically totally different fish from the wild salmon that come out of Alaska. They're like a, they're not even really related. Um, and the coho salmon and the king salmon are sort of like the two top fish that people get really excited about. But there are other kinds, too. There's sockeye and um, what they call kita, which is like chum or dog salmon and pink salmon, which is often the salmon you'll buy in cans. It's like mm. pink salmon. So that's just like a little salmon crash course. That's very All the different kinds of salmon. Cool. That's very fucking cool. I got a salmon tattoo recently. You did get a salmon tattoo? Well, no, Wait, oh, sorry, I got it. a trout for my dad. Ah, yeah. Um, I look at we look at this salmon distillate. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. Do you see that salmon distillate? I would that. Right. Or like at least put it in your bong water. Ooh, you that'd know, be some awesome. Salmon juice. We're tormenting Archie. He's looking like he would really like Can to I have make a, you a cracker. I'm okay. okay. I'm okay. I've had my hit, and I'm gonna wait until afterwards and then devour everything that's on that cheese platter. Do you want to get to the news? Yeah. What is our oh, news? Oh well, story actually, today? we should also like celebrate. Let's celebrate some local weed as well because if i'm going to be shouting out alaska the whole time then you either have to fly up to alaska or you have to become my friend stop by my place and i will let you try a bunch well that's why if you're watching our youtube you can see we actually have some great uh california cannabis from our favorite company lake grade we love lake grade um they grow under the blue skies of lake county california and they have um they've always got a great sativa option a great indica option and a great hybrid option that's how that's that's how they um, market them but they're all different strains and they sent us over some peanut butter souffle to try so Mm. i'm gonna spark this and um yeah they're just lake grade have been putting out consistently delicious pre-rolls and flour um since we met like that's one of my favorite things to smoke on the pod with you man it makes me excited because like if i were to go back to alaska i would want to bring some sun grown like this to share with all of my friends up there because they're hitting me with like the heat when it comes to indoor so i should bring some like heat outdoor for them and that's really how you make a friend or we'll just have to have them come down here and enjoy some california now that they they've hosted you we'll have to host them like get an airbnb and come down and do a tour of California. Let's do a tour of a California dispensary. With Wouldn't that be nice? That's a great May I have a idea. lighter, please? Of course. I'm going to spark this peanut butter souffle. Check them out at Lake Grade. And I'll get to the news this week. Yeah, it would be great to host those guys down here. Get an Airbnb. Just like go to some dispensaries. Go to some grows. Get them up to Mendocino where there's really great fishing. Yeah. That would oh, be really fun. That's what I wanted to say about the fishing thing. Um, I, love a, I love a loose moose because we are all over the place. All over the map. Always. Oh, that's good. <coughs> yep. Ooh, that's really good. I'm Lake just crapping my brains out. Sorry. No problem. Hang on. Here. Ah, perfect. That's the beauty of a loose moose. Yep. It doesn't matter. It does. It's a moose. It's a freaking moose. This is not a tight elk. <laughs> no. Remember a few weeks ago, <laughs> we we did a moose and we hadn't done one in a while. And it, oh, it was dry. It was the dry times. Yeah, I was doing dry June. You were doing dry June, and we were like, "What's happening?" We we're like, "No weed makes for a tight a tight mm-hmm. one." Guess who's lubricated again? We are lubed up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the news this week is actually some history. Oh. So if you want to like nerd out a little bit more, um, I didn't know about this when we were talking right before recording. Producer Mark said, "Oh, really?" And we were like, "Oh, that should be a cool news story to share." Right. So would you like to tell us what the news is this week? It's, it's a bit of history to crib off of our, our friends at uh, Great Moments in Weed History. Shout out Abdullah and Veen. I wonder if they've done an app about this because it's I didn't know this either when you brought this up, yeah. that Alaska was the second state to decriminalize cannabis. I don't know which the first was, but on May 16th, 1975, Alaska became the second state in the U.S. to decriminalize. The law imposed a $100 fine for possession, um, and that was it. So basically, you know, weed was no longer you weren't going to go to jail for weed in alaska as of 1975 1975 yeah 1975 
Um, and then um, there was a decision by the Alaska Supreme Court that held the Alaska Constitution's right to privacy that protected an adult's ability to like possess and or smoke weed in the privacy of their own home. So basically, they protected the constitutional right to privacy to have weed. I'm saying, yo. As of 1975. And then um, in 1982, they decriminalized possession of up to four ounces in the home or one ounce outside the home. Uh, fucking awesome. Anyway, they legalized for medicinal use, fully legalized in 1998, and then they fully legalized for um, adult use in 2014. That's so cool. They've been ahead of the curve for a long ass time. Yeah, you know what? You want to hear what the rest of the country was fucking around with in 1975 while Alaska was getting it right? I know it's the year Jaws came out. <laughs> okay, well that's a good thing. It's also the year of these inventions. Okay. Mood rings. Okay, great. Do you ever have a mood ring? Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're awesome. That's how you know how you're feeling. <laughs> Oh, good. I'm in a terrible mood. Oh, it's always black. It's just always black. My mood ring was always... I think it's broken. No, no. No, no you're just a, yep, a <laughs> tormented soul. <laughs> Damn it. I wanted to go yellow. Like, you know, mm -hmm. that popular girl in school who always had like, you know, that halo around her. Yeah. It's always, it's really funny to picture a bunch of all the goth kids lined up to return their mood rings because they all black. cracked. <laughs> <laughs> totally. That was definitely me. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this thing. Broken. Also invented uh, the Rubik's Cube. Okay, great. 1975. Never good at it. How about you? Uh, will watch the TikToks. Love a guy who uses a pinky that dexterously. Have you seen the competitions where they do them in like, they'll do two at once in seven seconds? Yeah. And that kind of craziness? There's an autistic dude. I don't know his name, but there's an HBO documentary about his rivalry with another guy to break that world record. It's no. so intense. There's a documentary about it? Yeah, it's so good. Hell yeah. Um, also, Pet Rocks. What the fuck was that? Yeah, so while Alaska is like smoking weed and eating the ranch, the rest of the world's looking at rocks and spending top dollar for them. They were buying, people were buying rocks. Did buying... they have like googly eyes? Who's to say? Yeah, Mark is nodding. They had googly eyes. So what? I don't care. <laughs> don't, don't I give you money for a rock? What? That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Unless it's everything everywhere all at once, right. get your pet rock out of here. Get it out of here. We don't want your damn rock. Uh, also, Pez Candy and Magic 8 Balls. I'm surprised you didn't say Chia Pet. I figured that would be in there somewhere. Maybe in the 70s, sure. You're right? Totally. It feels like a 70s thing. Um, but Pez Candy and a Magic 8 Balls. Jesus Christ, you have a mood ring and an 8 ball? Do you get to know what you feel any type of way or make any <laughs> choice for yourself? Everyone's just like, how do we feel? <laughs> how do we feel? We don't know. The Vietnam War has us all fucked up. We don't know how we feel. No wonder those... Yeah, anytime there's turmoil, they roll out toys that are just like we'll tell you how to live yeah here you go <laughs> so fucking true i feel like that you know thinking about that time too in alaska i feel like a lot of um war vets moved to alaska and i bet that like part of the cannabis use in alaska in the 70s was due to them moving there because they were you know a huge part of who spearheaded the movement in the 60s and 70s in norcal as well it was like you know war veterans who needed weed yeah hope Absolutely. Yeah. And you go up there and you become a citizen and you get some kind of oil check every single year, which yeah, I learned about. the dividend. The dividend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really interesting. Like nobody, nobody fucking, maybe everyone knows and I'm saying things that I didn't <laughs> know, but everyone else is like, yeah, dude. But um, just how important Alaska is to the country. And like, it's such an aorta, not only for oil that then gets shipped to come back here as gas that's too expensive or, but that's not Alaska's fault. Um, Just like how... Everything there makes the rest of America a place that's livable. Totally. That's really how I feel about it. Yeah. Yeah. I love And it's a great airline. It. Yeah. Alaska Airlines, best airline. They always give me a, a upgrade and they're nice to Archie. Really? Yep. Were you flown on Alaska Air with him? Yeah. That's how we get up to Seattle when we go to Seattle all the time. We oh, always fly Alaska. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, I'm an MVP silver status. Holy shit, really? That's right. I'm telling you, I get upgrades. Damn, Mary Jane. Fly with me. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah, I'll show you how to live. That's a hell of a flex. Yep. Um, so use code Mary Jane. That's right. On Alaska Air. Every time you check in. <laughs> you just go up to them and say, Mary, Mary Jane. Jane. <laughs> They're like, get them out of here. <laughs> TSA. <laughs> um, can I put this joint in that? Oh, you put a joint in that statue. I did already. That's fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to think if there's anything else Alaska based. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to talk about the show very quickly. Let's. Can you hold up the poster? Because uh, did it, people sign it? Yeah, that was um, Zach's idea. That's so awesome that you have. Zach's the producer. He's the brains. Him and Joe. Yeah. And Ben. You got the show merch, or yeah. what's it called? A memento. I'm sorry. It's a really important memento. Yeah. I need to become friends with someone at a frame store because I have a lot of things that I'd like to be on 
walls soon. Cool. Yeah. Let's get you a, find you a friend who works at a frame store. Yeah, I just saw a um a tour of Drake's mansion in Toronto. Okay. And he has like a trophy room. And he yeah. should have a fucking trophy room. And I have some really cool stuff and mementos that I'd like to like, you know, have hang on my walls to remind me to keep going. Are Drake's trophies for Degrassi? Yeah, all of them. Nice. Yep, every single one. He's got like 70. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good job. He even has the wheelchair. That's right. And the gun. The gun? Yeah, because he gets shot. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and so he has a gun. I'm a fan. I watched the original Degrassi, so that's like there was a Degrassi before that Degrassi. Really? Did you know that? The no. Pre Degrassi. Really? Yeah, it was called Degrassi Junior High, and it ran in the 80s. How was it? Terrible. But good? But great. Yeah. <laughs> when you're 12, you're like, oh my God, that kid did acid? What? Whoa. Oh, she's pregnant? What? Oh my God. <laughs> that TV is helpful. Help me grow up. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sorry to derail with dumb talk about Drake and Degrassi because you were talking about your show. Well, it's not a it's not really about the show. It's about, I think, something that um was inspiring about the show. And that is um so Zach, again, the the, the people who created this, Zach, Joe, Ben. And then massive support through Alaska. But Zach told me that he DM'd me and he and then he told Joe and he was like, Hey man, I don't know if this is even a thing, but would you want to come do a seven ten show up in Alaska? And I was like, hundred percent. And then he texts Joe, and Joe was like, What are you talking about? And then they were like, Well, we better figure out how to throw a great show. So they like dove in, put the cart at the other end of the fucking football field before the horse, and they just like created something that they were excited about to celebrate a plant that they love and fucking 710 oil day is the time to do it and so for me to be a part of something that had dudes just say like we want to make something we want to make something for our people and for our community and bring the whole weed community together for a holiday and then to make that happen and have all these people come out all these companies come out and have it all done by people who are just like we'll figure it out as we go this is just what we want to believe in Fuck, man. That's so beautiful. That's It looked incredible, too. Like, the pictures that I saw, the outdoor space that they had set up, and benches that you were saying they built. They paint, like they, they made built the furniture? benches. So, Joe, <laughs> fucking thank you, because he was a carpenter. He used to make stairs, which sounds crazy, because I guess you have to make one stair at a time, and then you stand on that stair, and then you make the next stair, and that's how you do it, and then you eventually get to the top floor, and you're allowed to walk back down. I did not know how stairs worked. I'm guessing. How do you build stairs? I have no idea. You can't start in the middle. You can build them on the side and then erect them oh maybe. on the side maybe on the side probably on the side i'm guessing them yeah maybe. i thought it was an abyss know. of boards <laughs> probably on the side i don't know maybe <laughs> does someone get at us about how stairs work <laughs> <laughs> let's hear it wait so um, he built and so, stairs and so they've had this beautiful um back ace is the name of the place ace and there's this beautiful back space mm -hmm. and they built benches for the entire crowd to sit on out of wood and stained them like they made benches yo that's amazing yeah and was it uh it must have been super light out when you were performing did it feel like what time of day i were didn't you go to bed stage? for 72 hours it was amazing <laughs> that's so awesome it was amazing i went to a bar um shout out sabrina great comic living up in uh in alaska shout out sabrina took me to a bar where it says do not eat the cheese because the health inspector came and gave them like a bee or something for having like loose cheese and crackers out for everyone because of COVID. And so they just put a sign that says, don't eat the cheese. And then everyone just eats the cheese because it's like, we tried to stop you. And oh so that's how God. they're getting around the health inspector at this bar. Fucking Alaska. <laughs> Perfect. It's so that's good. the most Alaskan thing I've ever heard. The other thing that made me laugh was... Uh, Capetta just DM'd me a reel and it was called like Alaskan car crashes, I think, or something. And it was a group of people gathered at the bottom of a cliff and someone was just like shoving a car off the top and they were all just like watching. And he was like, is this what they do? And I was like, yeah, it's like there's so much like like in Newfoundland where I grew up, my dad would always like find a beautiful spot. And he'd say, you know, it's a pretty spot because there's a car halfway down the cliff. Cause like <laughs> how people like, you know, have a great time in rural spots can sometimes seem kind of unhinged, but it's also like the wildest and coolest thing. Oh, and shout out Herbo Baggins, shout out Drew, brought a lasagna and mushrooms, but the lasagna was where it was at, a personal pan lasagna. Not a mushroom lasagna, but a lasagna with a side of mushrooms. A side of mushrooms, <laughs> the kind of order both of us would want. Perfect. Yeah, so thank you so much to Drew. It was awesome to meet you and your boo, and um, it was a really good lasagna. It was at, We had after-party lasagna. I saw a pic of that lasagna. It looked like crispy edges, bubbly center. 
you know, perfect cheese ratio. Oof. Yeah. It's a nice way to wash down those shrooms. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Herbo, as well. <laughs> perfect. I hope people don't mind that this episode is like me recanting something that people might not have experienced. I'm starting to get self-conscious about that because I get so excited about like people and places, but also I know that none of you listening have been there. So I hope this is like, okay, I'm just getting self-conscious about it. Why would you? I And I hope that the pe- friends in Alaska are listening and hearing like all of the love that you felt from them and that I you do. feel for them and that like... I'm so excited to hear about and I would love to visit like again and like bring weed and grub up there and get some of these Alaskan comedians on the podcast and some of these cultivators and some of these fucking chefs up there like let's go back to Alaska and like live there for a while I guess oh hey when I get a place you're more than welcome yeah you're more than welcome I just invited myself (laughs) yeah you should come because I'll get really good at salmon fishing that was the other thing you know like you can um sit around and just like be a terp nerd and geek out about terps and really do it. I was in a circle of people who were geeking about uh, geeking out about um different ways to implement a salmon net because maybe you know the actual name of the net, but it's a circle and like a, there's something, it's almost like a whale doing their air bubble thing mm-hmm. and it's a circle and then the fish get caught in the middle of the circle and then you can just like lift the whole net up. Um, and they were arguing about the difference between a circle net and somebody made a homemade hexagonal net to test if the surface area of having flat sides made it easier for the fish to get in than a circle. And they were all geeking out about the shape of a net and how it can be beneficial or worse depending on the speed of the water, the type of salmon, and like where the depth and everything. And it, they were like shape arguing. Net nerds. Net nerds. <laughs> you were sitting on that. Wild. Yeah. Wow. Net yeah. nerds. Yeah. Really cool. That's fucking awesome. And we also saw a boat that... um. What's the fucking name of it? It has like wings with lines coming off of the wings, almost like a uh, dragonfly. I don't know. Where like there's like the the it's like at angles and then the lines are at different depths and they're oh, going. Oh, are you talking about a troller? A troller. A salmon troller? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was a really cool thing too because I was picturing like ancient times when. Right. Um, that's this, hook and line. That's hook and line. Yeah. You know? There's no technology involved in that fishing. That is old, mm-hmm. old world, old style, old man in the sea. I mean, not quite, but Yeah. Yeah. That's there's no magic caught. eight balls in fucking Alaska. No. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no bycatch. That's one of the coolest things with um, the troll fishery is because it's so specifically targeted. There's very little bycatch, which is the fish that you weren't going for. So when you're scooping up things with a net, you're going to get a bunch of different stuff. Oh. You know, you can catch things that you weren't necessarily targeting. But with um, trolling, you are. it's like each one hook per fish. So they're not really catching that many things that aren't supposed to go after that lure. That's awesome. That's the best way I've ever heard about why I should start not throwing all my trash in the recycling like I do. Because <laughs> you always are like, dude, some of that is not recycling. I'm like, it all goes to the same place. I don't believe it. I mean, you're more right than not, honestly. Recycling really? Recycling is a disaster. Yo, there's been all this stuff that's come out lately where it's like, it's kind of not, none of it's getting recycled. We're all doing terribly as a species. We need to do better because of the awesome things that you're talking about. So this is a good time to be a troll. <laughs> no. Uh, I guess. Yeah. A troller. A troller. Mm -hmm. Perfect time to be a troller. Great. (laughs) (laughs) Do you want to do buds? I would love to do buds. Who are our buds? Well, I mean, if I can go first, I'll just shout out, you know, Zach and all of their IGs. My buds of the week this week are Terps Productions. Fucking, yo, I was kicking it with Ben's dad. His dad is the shit too. So I want to shout out his dad. Don't remember his name. I was on Mushrooms. Had a white claw. You know, real, real (laughs) loose. Um, Good Saturday night. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, please follow Ben on Instagram at Captain Quick Pick. Um, The dude is not only a great guy, but his energy is infectious. He's the kind of guy who, like, you want him to give you a bear hug because you know it's going to feel incredible. And then also, please follow Ice Beard Comedy at Ice Beard Comedy. That's Joe. Um, Joe, great comic. Wore a weed suit for the entire show. Yeah, we got a post a pic. Really cool top hat. Mm-hmm. You know, right on. And also, oh, not a big sh- hat. <laughs> <laughs> You're the best. <laughs> The absolute fucking best. And let me find Zach really quick. Um, Zach's is at Z-J-O-F-A-K. Z-J-O-F-A-K at Zach. Or no, at. (laughs) Yep, we're high. Yep. (laughs) Shout out Zach. Shout out Zach. He's the the brains. He's the effort. He's the work. All of them are. But he's the one who, you know, boom. 
Yeah. He boomed. He's the one who originally DM'd you. Yeah. He put the cart all the way at the other end of the football field. He did. Okay. And then that cart caught up. Nice. Or he caught up to the cart. Some, there was a cart meeting in the middle, maybe. Butt of the week. Whatever happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, my butt of the week is at AJ Grondon on Instagram. That's um, Amy Grondon, who is uh, fishing in Alaska right now on the FBR Minta with Captain Friedrichs, who was the, my captain when I worked on the boat up there. And Greg and Amy are trolling for salmon. So they're d- in that fishery that we were just talking about. And their fish is absolutely gorgeous. It's the most beautiful salmon that you'll ever see. And uh, their deckhand is uh, Clara. So shout out to the three of them who are oh, on the high seas right now. Damn. Mm-hmm. That's so cool to picture them out there right now. Yeah, it's a beautiful boat. I'll post a pic of that boat. I took a pic when I um, saw them most recently when I was up in Port Townsend. Okay, sweet. Yeah, she had a fresh coat of paint. She looked beautiful. Oh, Mary Jane, this has been an awesome loose moves. What a fun time. Thank Th- you. Thanks for giving me the space to like just celebrate something I'm super excited about and like and a uh, place in people I love. I was so excited to taste the salmon, try this weed, and hang with you to hear all about Alaska. So thank you. Right on. Right on. Oh man, can I say one more thing as we go out? Yeah. Um, because these are all gonna be dropped whenever they're gonna be dropped. Congratulations and thank you for doing so many of these episodes with me these past few weeks and shout out to top three studios and shout out to Mark yeah. for doing all of these episodes in a crunchy amount of time. <laughs> uh, we did it. I'm super fucking proud of it. It's very cool. And so just want to say like, thanks for doing this with me. It's been a wild ride. You don't know where we are in the timeline, man. Nah, motherfuckers. You don't fucking know. <laughs> but um, yeah, thank you, Mark for helping us do this because it's, it's great to bank these up so you can go and fucking do things in Europe. Yeah. If you watch the YouTube, there's one where I have a mustache and then the next one I have a full beard and then the one after that a goatee and one after that I'm bald. <laughs> it's very all over the place. <laughs> uh, well, shout out to all our friends in Alaska. Come to California. Come and smoke some late grade with us. Uh, when you come down, we will maybe go do a tour of their uh, spot up in Lake County. That would be fucking awesome. Fuck yeah. Thanks yeah. for fucking sponsoring the up, yo. Yo, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mary Jane. Yeah. Mary Jane, will you follow us at Weed and Grub on Instagram? Mike, will you email us at wg at weedandgrub.com? Absolutely. Will you leave a review, maybe five star click on Apple or Spotify? Please do. That would be so helpful for us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, bye, okay. everyone. Bye.